Good morning and welcome to St. Barnabas Church, this service for the third Sunday of Lent. First of all, I would like to say a big thank you to all of you who participated in last week's annual general meeting via Zoom. Um, it was a bit of an experiment, but I think all things considered, it went extremely well. So thank you for all of those uh, who were part of that meeting and for those who were part of our uh, technical support and in, in any way uh, participating. We, we appreciate your being there. And uh, hopefully that doesn't become the usual way we run that meeting. But uh, I was grateful for uh, last, uh, last Sunday. We have now erected outside the church um, Stations of the Cross um, featuring um, photographs of parishioners um, as a Monto in the stations. Uh, Kofi is uh, Christ and he did a super job. And I encourage all of you to come and maybe make it part of your Lenten practice to pray the Stations of the Cross in this outdoor and uh, safe way. You'll see it marked there. Um, and there's, as I say, the pictures of the stations and also prayers mounted uh, on the fence. And so it's a way to come and um, pray this uh, powerful stations. And the pictures, I have to say, are really powerful. They're amazing. I'm, I'm blown away by how well they've, they've turned out. So I'm, I'm sure you'll all want to come and take a look and to, uh, to pray in this way as a part of your Lenten discipline. I'm very happy to say that um, the Lessons in Music for Lent, uh, which we have been uh, teasing you with for a couple of weeks now, is finally um, now live. You can go onto our website and you will find them, uh, that, that service there. I haven't yet seen it, this is very recent, so I'm really looking forward uh, to watching and listening to that as well. So please uh, find that uh, on our website and, uh, and let us know uh, what you think. This is, as I said, uh, Michael Jarvis's last real project that he was working on. The Choral Scholars um, really wanted to put it together and I, I heard them during the, the recording. They've done a great job, and we're excited that that is now up and, uh, and live. Also, the, my last um, announcement for today, Father Kim Murray's lectures. Um, we've started recording them. The first lecture will be um, going live uh, very soon now, so I want you to just be aware that that's coming and um, wait for a link coming into your email inboxes from, from Karen to link you up with that uh, lecture uh, series on the origins of the Anglican Church in Canada as part of our What It Means to Be the Church uh, series. Please turn to our prayer of preparation um, and we say together, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of Thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love Thee and worthily magnify Thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with thy spirit. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Father of mercy, alone we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. When we are discouraged by our weakness, strengthen us to follow Christ, our pattern and our hope, who liveth and reigneth with Thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that Thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You must have no other gods besides me. You must not make a carved image for yourself, nor the likeness of anything in the heavens above or on the earth below or in the waters under the earth. You must not bow down to them in worship, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me. But I keep faith with thousands, those who love me and keep my commandments. You must not make wrong use of the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not leave unpunished anyone who misuses his name. Remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. You have six days to labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. That day, You must not do any work, neither you nor your son or your daughter, your slave or your slave girl, your cattle or the alien residing among you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is therein, and on the seventh day he rested. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and declared it holy. Honor your father and mother so that you may enjoy long life in the land which the Lord your God has given you. Do not commit murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false evidence against your neighbor. Do not covet your neighbor's household. You must not covet your neighbor's wife, his slave, his slave girl, his ox, his donkey, or anything that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. What is the heaven of the earth? And one might certify upon another. There is neither speech. 
reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The message of the cross is sheer folly to those on the way to destruction. But to us who are on the way to salvation, it is the power of God. Scripture says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the cleverness of the clever. Where is your wise man now, your man of learning, your subtle debater of this present age. God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. As God in his wisdom ordained, the world failed to find him by its wisdom, and he chose by the folly of the gospel to save those who have faith. Jews demand signs, Greeks look for wisdom, 
but we proclaim Christ nailed to the cross. And through this, and though this is an offense to Jews and a folly to the Gentiles, yet to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, he is the power of God and the wisdom of God. The folly of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So a bit of blessing. May the word be on your lips and in your heart as you read his holy gospel in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to thee, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned the, their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered what he had said, and they believed the scriptures and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In pursuit of my fascination of all things fungal, I recently read a book called Entangled Life. And the subject of this book is the amazing world of mycelium. Mycelia are the strands of rooting network that make up the body of a fungus, so that the mushroom you see, say coming up on your lawn after a fall rain, is the fruit of the mycelial body, much like a grape is the fruit of a vine. Actually, the real subject of that book is the exploring edges of the mycelial networks, the, what's called the hyphal tips. These hyphal tips 
spread out into their underground or woody environments in truly wondrous ways. They appear to make decisions. They display a capacity for something like memory. They move out in search of food, of course, but more than this, they link up with trees and plants to create vast communicating networks to the mutual benefit not only of the individual plants and fungi, but to the forest uh, as a whole. Through the mycelial networks, trees exchange nutrients with one another. Established trees send nutrients to seedlings or other trees that are somehow in trouble. Through them, trees actually send signals to one another so that if one tree is attacked by a pest, for example, it can send messages through the network to other trees, giving them early warning to prepare their natural defenses before being attacked themselves. So that we are beginning to learn that a forest is not so much what we always thought it was, a collection of individuals competing for scarce resources, as it is more of a communicating, interdependent network of organisms. There no doubt is competition, but that competition is set within a more fundamental field of relationships in which all work for the good of the whole. So I describe this to you, this recent discovery of what a forest is and how it works, because even in the book that I was reading, it struggles with the findings that it presents. See, many of the scientists in the field have difficulty seeing nature in any other way through the long-held narrative lens of competition between individuals. The idea that one organism might sacrifice the strength for the good of another, even across species, that altruism might exist in nature runs against the grain of traditional models of evolutionary understanding. But the evidence suggests that forests have evolved to be less collections of competing individuals and more rather communities in which individuals do at times sacrifice strengths in order to support others and for good, for the good of the whole. So it's a, somehow a beautiful story that I wanted to share with you. But my purpose in doing so is not to try to suggest that science is discovering the, pre the presence of loving self-sacrifice in nature. Love, after all, is a spiritual reality beyond empirical reach, so science can neither prove nor disprove its presence. My thought in sharing it is rather to give an example of how extremely difficult it is to remove ourselves from our received stories by which we make sense of things. When St. Paul contrasts the foolishness of the cross with the wisdom of the world, He's not arguing against reason. Some of us have thought that. But rather, he is pointing to a trap that we all are constantly falling into. For the world, what I believe that St. Paul means by that term is not something from which I can simply separate myself. The world is like the environment that we inhabit, like a fish inhabits water. And like a fish, in order to live, we breathe the world in. And so there's no sharp distinction, actually, between the world and ourselves. For the world's wisdom shapes our understanding, shapes our language, what we value, our desires. The world is how I understand and negotiate my place in the universe and all 
my relationships. In this sense, the world is as much within us, we carry the world within us, as it is outside of us. According to our tradition, since the fall and expulsion from Eden, our world has been shaped by some variation of the narrative of competitive individualism. Man against woman, humanity against nature, brother against brother, nation against nation. And that narrative is now coming to a destructive peak. And we think, why can't we just change the story? But we are unable just to step out of the world to enter another story. For that story is the environment in which we swim and, as I said, is embedded deeply within ourselves. And that is why even we who confess love for Christ struggle with our calling, struggle with the calling of our faith. Why we tend to live our trust that Christ crucified is the wisdom and power of God. Why do we struggle so much with that? We understand ourselves first as individuals, so that even our acts of charity tend to be made from positions of strength. And even the prayers of the church most often are for the salvation of the individual's soul. That our first priority is ourselves as individuals who only secondarily choose to be members of community is to us simply the way things work and have to work. We don't seem to have a choice in the matter. It's so obvious a fact. It's how, when we open our eyes, we just see the world to be. Thus, as a Christian, I struggle to know Christ as the center of my life. That Christ is my life. And that therefore my own good is inseparable from the good of my neighbor. So inseparable, in fact, that I am called to give up even my own life for my neighbor. Confident that, in fact, my own life is not my own, but Christ's. That Christ is, my life is Christ. And that my neighbor and I share one life in Him. Christ's one resurrection life. Lent is the season of confession. I confess because I know that my faith, my faith consists more in the desire to trust that the cross is the way of abundant life than it is actually living that truth. I struggle with the world in me and with the prevailing wisdom that tells me that the cross is foolishness. But I also know that I am not alone in this struggle. That what I call my struggle is in truth Christ struggling in me and for me. I am not alone and that precisely is the point. It is His life, His spirit, His love in me and in you and in all, freeing us from ourselves in a network we call His body. So this struggle, it is not in vain, even though I cannot free myself. For it is Christ struggling to set me free into an abundance of life that I can hardly imagine. That is my trust And that trust is the joy of our life together, the joy of the Christian life. God in me, and if in me, then in us all, sharing one life together. In Jesus' name, amen.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we stand in God's presence, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, draw near. Lord, draw near and stay. Sovereign Lord, keep thy church faithful in times of trouble. We ask not for freedom from suffering, but for strength to endure to the end. Lord, draw near. Lord, draw near and stay. We pray for the suffering of the world, which disturbs those who have faith and crushes those who have none. Give us compassion to pity all human suffering and the will to relieve it. We lift up to thee now all refugees, innocent prisoners, and all child workers who are ill-treated in the third world. Lord, draw near. Lord, draw near and stay. Lord, whose redeeming love has drawn us together as members of this parish, deepen our love for thee and strengthen our affection for one another, that thy blessed kingdom may be enlarged here in every way that is pleasing to thee. Lord, draw near. Lord, draw near and stay. Strengthen nurses, doctors, and all who care for the sick. We ask for thy healing spirit to rest over all those for whom our prayers are desired. Lynn Thomas, Amanda Horsey, Maria, Karen Marie, Jim and Hilary, Margaret and Art Searle, Emiliano, Mary Cox, Joy, Maureen, Shirley and Leo, Craig, Anna, Charlie, Louise, Maya, Anne, Rosemary, Mary Creighton, Lily Parker and her family, Maggie, Jeff, Jack and Callum, Laurie Guthrie and family, Sue Moore, Bev and Wayne, Marlin and Tanya. We pray also that Lisa may travel in safety and for the World Health Organization. Lord, draw near, draw near and stay. In the communion of saints, we pray for the departed, in particular for Grain Radcliffe, Wilfred Alec, and those whose year's mind falls at this time, Frederick Wood, 
Jean Kissinger, Sheena Stark, Richard Lewis, and Anne Shepherd. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. <laughs> Rejoicing with Blessed Mary, Edward King, Bishop, Gregory of Nyssa, Bishop and Doctor, Robert McRae, Bishop, Barnabas, our patron, and all the saints of every time and place, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord. We bless thee, O Lord, for all thy goodness to us and to all people. Grant us grace to follow humbly in the footsteps of Jesus, on the road that heals to full Grant us grace to follow humbly in the footsteps of Jesus on the road that leads to fullness of life through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people. We acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. In union, dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of thy church, where thy blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father. I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I believe that thou art truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to thee and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. Let me never be separated from thee. Let me live and die in thy love. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness to deny yourselves, to take up your cross, and to follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs> Thanks be to God.